You are listening to the Mark Guzman Podcast Experience. Yeah, and that makes total sense, too. Now, one thing I didn't know existed in Congress was a wine caucus. And so when did the wine caucus start? How many members are there? And what's your role in the wine caucus? Well, the wine caucus started the year I got to Congress. And I was elected in 1998, and there was another California member of Congress, George Rodanovich, from the Mariposa area. And George had a small winery. So I came to him, and I said, uh, let's start a wine caucus. And he was all in. Uh, we started it. Uh, we had, uh, at one point, we had about 250 members, both the House uh, and the Senate. 250? 250. And we were able to do uh, events, and, and I, you know, I won't, I won't uh, try and uh, 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 fool you. Uh, some of our events were wine tastings. <laughs> it was just an opportunity for people to get together and have a glass of wine and talk about the wine. Uh, but we had a very serious side also. Uh, we, had, uh, we had policy uh, provisions that we, uh, we, we, uh, we came together to form. Uh, when there was the, uh, when the glassy wing sharpshooter uh, started devastating vineyards in California, nearly wiped out the uh, grape growing region in Temecula, um, the, there were other industries that were host uh, industries for that vector. Uh, the citrus industry and the commercial nurseries, the ornamental uh, nurseries. They would, uh, the, the uh, uh, vector would attach to these plants or to the citrus, and, uh, and they, they didn't hurt the ornamental plants. They didn't hurt the citrus, but they'd fly next door and, uh, and infect the surrounding vineyards. So it was our wine caucus that brought all the all those industries together and said, "Hey, it, it may not hurt you, but you're hurting everybody else. So let's figure out uh, how we can combat this thing and uh, and 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 save a very very important uh, industry." So there's been a number of policy issues that we've gotten involved in, uh, in particular uh, funding for research. Uh, uh, there's a couple of agricultural schools in California that do a great deal of research in regard to grapes <coughs> and wine. <coughs> so we've helped uh, let folks understand what that means. We've been the conduit from bringing, for bringing information from the ground to Washington, D.C. So policymakers know uh, what's important and what's needed for grape growing and, and for the production mm-hmm. of wine. Because remember, um, you hear a lot about uh, the amount of wine that's sold. I think it's about $60 billion a year, uh, wine uh, from our area that's sold. But the wine uh, community is responsible for about $180 billion worth of economic activity. Wow. So anytime that bottle of wine is sold, you know that there's people that farmed. And so uh, all the equipment, if it's a if it's a disc, if it's a cultipactor, if it's a hoe plow, if it's a, a tractor, you know, somebody bought that in order to grow them. Uh, the folks that are pruning the vines and tying the vines, they get their paycheck. They go downtown and, and do something. All these folks pay taxes on that, and that's taxes that come right back into the community for schools, for health care, uh, for, uh, for, for transportation. And then that just ripples across the country. Uh, every restaurant that serves Reynolds uh, Cabernet or Bon Terra Sauvignon Blanc, they have a staff, they have chefs. People come in, want a nice bottle of wine to drink uh, with their meal. Uh, that, that just that furthers the economic impact uh, so, of the wine community. So the wine caucus steps in to even help create legislation for like shipping wines across state lines, for Absolutely. example. Absolutely, and that's a big issue, as, as you probably know. Um, states have control. Thank you for listening to this podcast short. For more podcast content, be sure to subscribe to all of our podcast channels on YouTube, iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Libsyn, CastBox, Podbean, and literally anywhere else you listen to podcasts.